This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the perfect place to create a professional website for creators constantly on the go. There are some cameras humans have created that reach beyond even the best cinema cameras in existence. Cameras that transcend our normal view of what modern cameras can do and venture into the realm of science fiction. We call them God-level cameras. One such camera was created 10 years ago in 2012 by an engineering team at Duke University, the Aware 2 camera. And you're not alone in thinking that this camera looks like a particle collider, the mother box from DC, or an everything bagel. This insane looking box can take photos up to 50 thousand megapixels, or as they say, 50 gigapixels. To give you an example of how massive of an image this is, you can zoom in on the photo and see things miles away with fairly decent detail. And to put this in a resolution perspective for those of you who love your 4K footage, which typically is around 8.5 megapixels, if you were to take 50,000 megapixels and fit it to a regular 16 by 9 ratio for television, your output would almost be 300,000 resolution image at about 298 8,000 by 167,000 framing. So this image is absolutely massive. But why did they build this camera in the first place? And how does it capture at such an incredible megapixel rate? Well, let's explore that. But first, where would you even be able to house such a photo if you got your hands on one of these cameras? Well, I can't think of a better place to show off your gigapixel photos than on Squarespace. Squarespace has all the tools you need to house your otherworldly photos in a fashionable gallery that will make you question if you even needed 40,000 megapixels in the first place. With easy to design templates that are customizable to your specific needs, Squarespace is a great Great option for those needing a professional site to attract clients who need a gigapixel camera at their next event. If you're seriously considering building a website but have held back because of the cost and the time consuming nature of building a website, test out Squarespace today. In the time it takes you to render out your 40,000 gigapixel image to show off, you could have already built your entire website. That's how easy it is. So head right now to squarespace.com slash framevoyager with the link below in the description. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code Frame Voyager. Now, back to some God-level cameras. The term gigapixel is one that you don't really hear very often, as the closest a commercially available camera has gotten to this level, even in 2022, is probably the Hasselblad camera, which can get up to 400 megapixel images. Granted, that's with a multi-shot option. So to capture the 50,000 megapixels the Aware 2 camera is capable of capturing, you'd have to have 125 more Hasselblad cameras to get that resolution level. And while the idea of a gigapixel image may seem like a recent achievement, we actually got our first gigapixel image in 2003. A software engineer named Max created a gigapixel image of Bryce Canyon by stitching together 196 separate photographs taken with a 6 megapixel digital SLR camera. And in 2003, the processing time took hours upon hours to do this. This turned some heads back in the day and eventually reports came out that the US Department of Research Agency, or DARPA for short, was looking to build a gigapixel camera for, you know, research. Just so you know, the government is watching everything you do. Always watching. And to create this camera, DARPA would partner with Duke University and scientists from the University of Arizona to create the camera that would become the Aware 2. This is Duke University. This is the Aware 2 gigapixel camera. It takes uh, gigapixel images in a single snapshot. But traditionally, you think of cameras as something that you point and shoot. You know, you say, I want to see that. You point the camera there and shoot. This one you shoot and then point. This camera sees everywhere that you could see and sees it with a resolution 10 times better than what the human can see. What it does is it makes digital media truly interactive rather than just a picture thinking of it as, as something that you hang on the wall. Here a picture becomes something that can only be understood by you know, playing with it interactively on a zoomable interface. Running this project was David Brady, a professor of electric engineering at Duke. He also led the Duke Information Spaces project, DISP. Historically, DISP had focused on computational imaging systems with a particular emphasis on smart cameras for security, consumers, transportation, and broadcast applications. With the great team put together, they wanted to start designing this camera and would eventually end up with a design that would capture 50 gigapixels with 120 degree horizontal field that is five times better than the human vision. It is a team of uh, scientists at Duke University have built a prototype of what perhaps is the first uh, soup to nuts gigapixel camera. What that is is a camera that's about 
30 times more powerful than the best digital SLR you could get on the market today. And so when we're talking about 30 times better than the best SLR, talk to me in pixels, right? Is this is this is how many pixels relative to what we can get out of that best SLR? Right, so today I think uh, the top line of digital SLRs probably comes in at 15, 20, 25 megapixels. A megapixel is a million pixels. The camera that the Duke University team has put together uh, has a billion pixels. They did this by synchronizing 98 cameras into this single prototype device, capable of detecting detail from as far as a kilometer away. It measured 2.5 feet on either side and 20 inches deep, with most of the interior of the cube occupied by by electronics with only 3% being the optics to actually capture the image. The main scientific advance in, in making these cameras is this idea of making big cameras out of parallel arrays of micro cameras. It uses a spherical monocentric crystal ball as its primary objective lens. And then behind that, it has 100 micro cameras, each of which is a 14 megapixel sensor that act as independent eyepieces looking through this camera in different directions. And we can stitch those together to create a single gigapixel image. In total, it weighs around 100 pounds, which totally would fit on a gimbal. It has two different modes of operation, the live view mode that generates a single display scale image stream by binning information at the sensor level to minimize the amount of data and stress, and the GPU then performs the composite on a display computer, allowing you to explore the image in real time. The other mode, the snapshot mode, captures a full data set for 14 seconds and then stores the information for later use through post-processing. Every time a picture is is taken, it requires 430 watts of power to cool off all of the electronics as they process the image. And if some of you smart people out there were paying attention to the math and realized that those 98 cameras don't actually add up to the 40,000 megapixels, that's because this camera has the advantage of being extremely flexible and the fact that it can be scaled. The versions that we're building of this are going to go up to 10 gigapixels and so we're well over an order of magnitude uh, bigger than the current uh, state of the art. This technology is going to revolutionize all cameras bigger than cell phone sized cameras. The same design can be upgraded from two to 10 to 40 gigapixel systems with no changes in the lenses or micro optics designs. You just add a couple more cameras. David Brady remarked that everything works, but the challenge right now is that the electronics are kind of too large. With the next generation, we're shrinking the electronics, hopefully. And that's something we will be covering in future episodes more gigapixel cameras that they created after this one. So be sure to subscribe to get your God level camera fix. But though we tease the fact that this has military applications for DARPA at the beginning, what else were they hoping to use this camera for? And it's going to take a long time to get a handheld consumer version. And the reason is the electronics take up a lot of space. The optics don't, but the electronics do. And they also require tremendous amount of power and ex uh, have a lot of heat coming out of it so you need a large box to contain it so right now it has to sit on the floor or mounted on a very very strong pole for it to be workable brady says that our initial market isn't for consumers rather we want to give consumers these detailed photos they can interact with to be able to use this camera in consumer markets for large events giving the consumers ability to interact with the images also with increased resolution brings the possibility of improving automated recognition systems and ai systems and not all for, you know, those nefarious purposes like AI taking over the world, but for highly specific and detailed manufacturing processes as well. Some even think that the transmission of gigapixel images to TVs that can handle them is within reach in the near future. And I'll believe that when I see it. And while this technology is just available for scientists at this point, you can't go buy this camera from Best Buy. There is another camera company that was starting around this time called Lytro, and they were creating a space age style light field camera. And one camera that could film up to 40K resolution and change the focus of a video and photo in post after you took it. And you can watch that fascinating video right now, right here. Just go ahead and click the video.